continuing with the consciousness, lecture of consciousness. Last week we discussed about the Bhavanga. So today we are going to discuss about the Javana Chittas, which is in the page uh, uh, according to the last, last week's handout. I think the paragraph number is 4.34. Right? 4.34. So, Javana Chittas means uh, now we already know there are 14 functions of Chittas. Chittas can perform 14 types of functions. So, we discuss about uh, three functions the function of Patisandhi, giving rebirth and the first chitta which arises in a life and then we talk about the last chitta means the death consciousness by which we die it means that it doesn't mean that with the death consciousness you die it means it's the last chitta which appears in the one life and then we talk about the bhavanga chitta which is in between which makes the life continuum which is a very important chitta and today we are going to discuss about the most active and proactive chittas which are called javana chittas javana so these, uh, among the chittas, there are certain type of chittas which has an extra effort, extra force by which we perform all the prominent acts such as talking, eating, walking, all the physical movements, thinking, meditating and all this. So these chittas are called javana. So in Pali, the strength force is called normally java. Java is, and sometimes it's called vega. This can also refer to speed. Speed means how quickly it happens. This can also be called Vega. Speed of a person who is running can also be called Vega. But here we are not referring to the speed. We are referring to the strength, power of a Chitta. It's like a thunder strike. Chitta always, all the Chittas generally have a similar lifespan according to the literature. But some Chittas have an extra effort, extra power by which uh, we do certain actions like active actions so these are the most important chittas by which we perform all the uh, visible or all the prominent actions in our life so the main characteristic of javana is being with a power or a force so these javana chitta are called javana chittas the pali word is vega so thing is now when uh, we all also mentioned the last week that chitta happens in processes Chitta happens in processes. In between the chittas which make our call, which make the link are called Bhavanga Chitta. So these Bhavanga Chittas doesn't let the mind stream to Z's. So when a new object has struck at the Bhavanga, when a new object has struck at the Bhavanga, or if, the, if a Bhavanga has gone to an object, both is possible to say. So new chittas arises taking the newly appeared object to the mind. So these chittas we call the secondary chittas. Secondary chitta. Chitta is consciousness. This is called the primary chitta. Primary chitta or the original chitta. So all the chittas, secondary chittas are the ones which are prominent to us, which are which are apparent to us. So Bhavanga Chitta is the place, is the actually it is the door, so it never becomes an object of the secondary chittas. Whatever object has strikes at the Bhavanga Chitta, which becomes the object of the secondary chittas. So within these secondary chittas, there are certain chittas, consciousness, which have an extra force. So our, all the activities happens in these uh, functions that are done by these chittas. So they are the ones we call as Javana. So this, in, in these processes, most of the processes, this javana arises. Javana may not arise in a process if, there, if the time is not enough, the object is not clear. So because of few reasons, the javanas may not arise. But the purpose of arising these processes, purpose means why these processes arise is to know the object clearly. So I think... Two weeks ago, like in the first lecture about the second lecture about the mentalities, we talk about a phenomenon called phenomenon of effectiveness. Of effectiveness. If you have the past handouts, it's under the Vedana. 
I explained about the feeling, the mental concomitant, which is necessary for all the chittas to happen. So under that explanation, I have given this, the phenomenon of effectiveness. It means that every chitta has a basic level of cognition. So all the chittas know the object clearly. There is no chitta which is unable to know the object in certain levels. Like all the chittas, when it knows the object, it will taste its flavor. It will recognize its peculiar marks. So that's kind, this kind of certain level of cognition is available in every each and every chitta. So that is what we call a phenomenon of, a phenomenon of effectiveness. It means a chitta may never arise without Vedana. It means all the chittas, when they, the collective cognition happens, it will always taste the flavor of the object. It will always recognize the object. There is no chitta which doesn't arise without the sanya. So uh, then there this phenomenon of effectiveness means to know the objects clearly. At the same time, when these processes happens, it is mentioned in the literature that the purpose of this process, when I say purpose, it's not a purpose governed by a god or someone, it's just a phenomenon, that's how we explain it. The purpose means why these processes happen is for the purpose is to arising of Javana. So the arising of Javana is the reason why the processes happen. Why the Javanas arise? Because the object can be known clearly and so we can have, the mind can have certain kinds of uh, actions can be done regarding the object. So all the uh, chintas that happen in the first part of the process is directed towards the Javana. So we normally say the literature, some scholars of the uh, ancient uh, tradition has mentioned that uh, these chittas, which are in the beginning part of a process, have an uncom uncompleted task. So we normally say aparibhyata kicha. It is like they are aparibhyata is they are not fully functioning. It's like aparibhyata is they are able, like they are capable. Their capability is very high. So aparibhyata means they have not completed their task, it's like the task has not been completed yet and they are not <coughs> performing very, uh, uh, very skillful tasks. The reason is the whole process is used or whole process is uh, uh, aimed at this level of the chittas, javana chittas. With the javana chittas we know the object clearly, we make decisions. We come in, we do the actions, kammas, all these active uh, activities happen at this level. So the purpose of these processes to happen is to come into the javanas. So the beginning levels of the chittas are focusing, are, are, are focused at this, like are, are for this purpose. So this is also another point that the consciousness works for a certain kind of phenomenon. That phenomenon means it never happens without the effective phenomenon. So always, sometimes in the conscious process may not come to the level of jhana. That is because there was some lack of conditions. The object was struck at a later time. It was not clear. It was an obscure object. In such a cases, javanas may not arise. But if an object has struck at the chitta, at the consciousness, at the bhavanga, at a, a clear level, at the beginning of its, uh, uh, at the beginning of the lifespan of the object, at that time it has to, the chitta process should surely come to the level of jhana. So how, why do we say it should come to the level of jhana? Why the Buddhists advocate, the Theravadians advocate that the mind process is working according to a certain phenomenon, certain law. That law means the mind is uh, uh, processing towards a clear cognition, towards a clear cognition. So these Javana chittas, which are in a, uh, intense power compared to the other chittas, normally there is a limit of these Javanas. In Kama Avatara sens sensual sphere processes, we normally say they are seven in number. Normally these Javanas happen seven times. So in the diagram we normally write them as J, seven Js. Seven Js means seven Javanas. So this Javana doesn't go beyond seven in the Kama Avatara Vitis. And sometimes there is, a, some may say six, so six or seven, doesn't exceed more. Then the process breaks. 
and it comes into a neutral level of the mind. Again, another process happens. So likewise, it happens in packets like processes. That's how an understanding comes when an object has struck at the mind, mind uh, at the bhavanga chitta. This is the normal mind door process. I choose a mind door because mind door is the actually active process. The five sense doors like the chakku dwara viti, sota dwara viti, doesn't do much effect to our lives. Right? This means they are, they are, that level of javana is very low in these processes. In the mind of process is quite high. So, savan javana, then we have tadaramana, kudadaram chitras, and then we go into bhavanga. So, object has strike, struck at the bhavanga. The so, striking ha happens. So, these all three are called bhavanga chitras. So this is where yeah, the object make an impact to the mind. Because at this level, when the object is influencing the mind, already the mind has a certain object which was taken at the near death moment of the previous life. That cognition is interrupted by the new incoming object. So we draw it with different marks. Normally BH means Bhavanga. NA means Bhavanga Chalana. Bhavanga Chalana means the bhavanga is interrupted by the new incoming object. Then we call bhavanga upacheda. It means terminating the bhavanga. Bhavanga process will be stopped after this. Because the bhavanga is getting weaker because of the influence of the new object. Weaker means it cannot stick to the, its own object. It has been cognizing a certain object. That focus has been interrupted. So it is a certain kind of a weakness in the cognition of its own object. So that is called we interrupt, we call it interrupted. So then this, because of this object, the bhavanga stream stops and the secondary chittas happen from here. So this is where the secondary chittas happen. Then the mind stream again falls into bhavanga. Mind stream again falls into bhavanga. So this, uh, in this process, normally the chitta happens according to a uh, law. It means chitta doesn't happen out of an order. The, uh, after the bhavanga, directly a javana chitta, which a high intense call, uh, force, can never arise. There should be an adverting consciousness. Because the mind has been occupied with a different object in the bhavanga level, so it has come into an active level. So this active level is arrived by this chitta, we call adverting consciousness. So this adverting consciousness takes the new object. The newly arrived object is taken by this. But here, it has a different object which was taken in the past life. The new object is influ object is influencing the chitta. So here it has been interrupted. The new this own object, the taking of this own object has been interrupted. But its object is the previous object which has which was taken in the previous life. Then the new object is taken at this level, so the level of this cognition is quite weaker when we compare with Javana Chittas. So this is like the step to go into the higher uh, powerful Chitta. So always the Chitta comes into the higher level in a gradual process. So after that, one mind or consciousness determines the nature of the object. Determination doesn't mean, for example, when we think about two pens, which one to select, we consider this one is better. So this normally happens in many number of mind processes. Here we are talking about this different kind of a determination. Determination means based on this determination, if we consider this object has something has to be a good object or something to be attached, something to be disliked, the javana, the nature of javana will change. So this manodwara vajana, this adverting consciousness greatly influences the nature of javana. All the active decisions are taken by this javana. Then the next mind of process is fully influenced by the whole process. Whatever the ideas will come in, with in this process, in this process, are uh, affected the next process. So the next process coming to a more clarity about the object. So likewise, the ideas can get developed based on the same object. That's how the gradual development of idea happens. So uh, after the manodwara vajana, the mind comes into an intense level of uh, cognition and the force. So these chittas are called javana chitta. So this process of the gradual development of chittas are called the chitta niyama. So this chitta niyama can be seen also in the five sense door processes. Five sense door processes means when an object has struck at the eye door, for example, there is an initial process which happens because eye door, the object comes through a different, different channel. 
Mind though means the object directly comes to the mind. It's a thought. We are, we are getting a certain thought. But when it comes to a different channel, the process slightly changes. So the first three chittas will be the identical. Then we come into a different source of chittas. And we come to seven jamanas. Like this. If I draw it in a short way. So here the jamanas happens at a later time. Later time. So in the initial moment, this is the we are in the bhavanga bhavanga level, and then a chitta adverts the newly arised object at the eye. Then the eye consciousness this happens on the eye. In the eye, the seeing happens. So this is the consciousness by which we see the object. Then it is received by another object. It is investigated by another object. It comes into a certain determination, and then the crucial chittas, powerful chittas happens. So in the five sense door processes, we can easily find there is a law of the chitta. It means if the, the powerful chittas which taste the flavor of the object, which enjoys the object, doesn't happen if the object was, pro was not properly determined as a good or bad object. So the chitta, this chitta cannot determine if it was not investigated thoroughly in one mind moment even. Then it was, it, it, was, it was not able to be investigated if it was not received because at this moment the chitta happens on the eye. Normally according to the literature, chitta happens based on the heart. So here the chitta, uh, the chitta which happened on the eye, which saw the object clearly because other, in, from other places we cannot have that experience of seeing. Then that object has to be retaken in a place where the chitta normally functions. So that is why this chitta we normally say the receiving chitta. It happens in a different location. It retakes the object. That the, re, the top object which was retaken is investigated. Investigated means another cognition happens with a more clarity in the in the level of uh, see, observing. So because of that higher level of uh, observing the next chitta can come into a determination. Why it could come into a determination? It was observed well by the previous chitta. Why it could observe well by the previous chitta? Because it was received by another chitta in the place where normally chitta exists. And how it could, why it could receive it properly? Because it was seen clearly on the place where the object struck. It means it happened on the eye. It had a direct experience. So why this chitta happens here in the eye? Because from, it was in the bhavanga level, which was aware of a different object, because it had it was adverted, the mind stream was the bhavanga stream was stopped and a new chitta happens, adverting directing the mind stream towards the newly arrived object. So like why the chitta happens in a process. We call this the phenomenon of chitta consciousness, chitta niyama. This we can find in the commentary literature and also uh, if you look into some suttas uh, like Madhupindika Sutta, we find this phenomenon has been explained by the Savakas and also by the Buddha. Like uh, what you experience is what you recognize, what you recognize uh, is what you uh, so, so forth, these kind of sequences are mentioned. So uh, there are four chitta, according to the literature, chitta happens in a process, in a sphere, in a phenomenon, as in under a phenomenon. So this we call the phenomenon of consciousness. So this, uh, uh, in this phenomenon of consciousness, now here if I look at this, uh, okay, these are two types of chitta vt. This is the mind do vt and this is the uh, sen five sense do vt. So here we are exclusive to the eye I, I, I do. That's chakra vijnana, seen through the eye. So in this process, other than the phenomenon of consciousness, there is another type of a phenomenon that which I call the phenomenon of effectiveness. It means, it also says that our bhavanga chitta, even though it has a, pre, a different object which was taken in the previous life, that mind stream is always, it's always in a certain urge to go to new objects. I repeat the sentence again. Our mind stream is always in a certain urge to go towards new object. That is why when we are awake, we cannot stop thinking. The mind will always keep on thinking on a new object. The reason the literature says the mind is has an inherent nature of serving, uh, searching for objects. A nice example given by my, my good friends, like it's like, a, for example, think about a, a Wi-Fi in a in a machine. If you on the Wi-Fi, 
Even though it is not connected to a Wi-Fi means that Wi-Fi connection, uh, the, the button that makes the it connected to the Wi-Fi. So when you on it, if it is even it is not connected, it always search. It is like in a few after few every few seconds, it always searches for the signal. So in the same way, our mind stream, even though it's in the Bhavanga level, it has a certain urge, certain urge of going towards new object. But this urge stops when our body my body is weaker when we get sleepy when we get sick at that time the mind doesn't want to want to go into these objects so the body affects greatly to our mind that's why if if we are tired even even we are in a in a uh, audience if our, our body is tired or we, we lose the interest and our body starts to get uh, sleepy at that time the mind doesn't loses this urge in the sleep, sleep it's, uh, sleeping time, it has a very less urge to go into the object. But when we are awake, we cannot stop thinking. The reason is that urge is very active at that time. So even though we normally mention the Bhavanga Chitta has a different object, it has a certain urge. This urge is given by the Manasikara Chetasika, attention of the Bhavanga Chitta. So this Manasikara Chetasika always make the Bhavanga a bit active. So what happens when an object has struck or otherwise it's better to say always the mind goes towards certain objects. So this can happen in two ways. I'll be explaining this in the next semester when we talk about the object. There is a special lecture for the purpose of object. It can happen because of the previous experience that we had. And also because of the urge of the mind to go towards new objects. Because of these two reasons, it means if I briefly explain, sometimes the certain objects have been experienced by us in previous time. So these experiences, which were very strong experiences, leaves a certain kind of a force or energy or effect in our mind stream. So this effect gets activated time to time. So that's why suddenly we start to remember our past experiences out of nothing. So this is the mind stream is influenced by our past experiences. We call this Upanishad Pachya in, 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 the, in the literature. So because of this past experiences sometimes influence our mind. Then the next thing is when we get a new object, we see an object and then the mind also tends to go towards the similar object. That's why we see a person. And suddenly we see the person in a few seconds we remember the experience we had with him so or we see a certain object our mind starts to go with objects related to that I have seen it here I have seen a similar object this was this and it still keeps on going so this is another nature of the mind mind always jumps like automatically naturally goes towards the object that is the one reason why the objects the mind the bhavanga chitta goes towards object and the next reason is the influence of our past experience leaves a certain effect to our mind stream so i'll, I'll explain that in detail when we come to that chapter then uh, the thing is there is a certain urge this urge when it receives the object either the mind goes towards the object or the object is received to the mind so whatever it is this urge gets an opportunity when the object is received so what happens this urge starts to increase when the object is given so this uh, with, the, with the process it comes and when it comes to the level of javana when it comes to the level of javana we say this urge has come into the culmination this urge is to snow the object Javana chittas are the consciousness which knows the object perfectly. Perfectly mean in a high, higher level, higher clarity. So it has come to a climax when the Javana has happened. So the, uh, that's why we say there is a certain phenomenon of effectiveness. The mind stream always goes towards the object, not just going to the object, it goes to the object to see it, experience it clearly. So this earth increases one after one if you take a five sense door process it takes few steps to come to this level and there here it, it takes a one chitta and comes to that level so when it comes to the javana level we say that urge has come to a higher level so in the in the in the handout i have given uh, two uh, ter terms to uh, for, for the uh, easiness in explaining so we normally say compulsion they may not give the uh, real English meaning and impulse. 
So these both normally say about the urge to do something. There's some kind of uh, urge that we have within us to do a certain thing, to, to know something. So here we say the Javana, the, the in urge of the Javana Chitta we had in a very general level, I will call it a compulsion to know the objects and then it comes to the level of impulse when, we, when the Javana happens. So that's why we call it impulsive consciousness. It's like impulsive consciousness doesn't mean that they are talking about this impulse. I have adapted this word to show that this has a certain kind of a higher urge in knowing an object. So the thing is, the urge which was existing in the Bhavanga level comes into higher level when it comes to the Javana level. The next point is, even though it has come to the Javana level, the climax of the urge has come to its climax, but still, within the Javana process also, still it starts to increase. Still it starts to increase. It means the first Javana knows the object clearly, second Javana knows it more clearly, so likewise it starts to increase. It's not only, have the, not that all the Javanas have the same level of cognition. And the next, time, next point is, the power of the Javana also, we said the Javana has an extra force than the other Chittas. This force also starts to increase one after another. So the impulse to know the object increases, the urge to know the object. At the same time, the force of the Javana also increases. At the same time, the clarity of cognition also increases. So there are three points that we have to understand here. The urge to know the object. Then the force in cognition. The normally say it's force is enough. Then the clarity in cognition. So all these three qualities in the consciousness starts to increase one after one. One after one. So the urge increases to know the object and then the force to, uh, of the consciousness that is an inherited quality of consciousness and then the clarity in cognition starts to increase. But with regard to force I have to mention something. In these processes normally we say Javana are the priority number one in the force, they are the highest force and then the force is higher in these two chittas. These two adverting chittas has more force than these chittas because they are kiriya chittas we normally say. Force is something of an intentional, force is determined by the intentional attribute of the chitta. So these middle chittas are we normally say resultant consciousness of a past karma. So therefore their force is lesser. So even though when we mention there is a gradual increasing of these three attributes, but with regard to the force, it happens like it increases, it drops, and then increases and increases. So with regard to the force, it happens in a quite a different way. But when we come to the clarity of the chitta, urge of uh, clarity of the chitta and urge of the chitta to know the object, it keeps keeps on increasing. It keeps on increasing step by step. So then, uh, yeah, it keeps on increasing step by step. Uh, yes, so these are the uh, gradual increasing of the chitta. So we normally call it if, uh, phenomenon of effectiveness. So then what happens, the javana chittas, one after another, get intensified in these three attributes. So when we say the force, force is uh, the chitta has intentional uh, force attribute. At the same uh, intentional attribute, at the same time, this force can be seen in the ability to know the object clearly. At the same time, sometimes these Javana Chittas makes our body to involve in physical and verbal activities. So this is another force of the Javana. So it causes our body to do certain actions. This is done by producing a certain kind of uh, cooperativity we call Chitta produced matter. Because of the air which is produced by these chittas, our body starts to move and perform certain actions. So this force of the Javana chittas can be seen in the force of uh, ability to cognize at the same time its ability to make physical actions with the body. So then this, this uh, attribute starts to increase with the Javana chittas. So then what happens, now we do discuss about the phenomenon of consciousness, it means consciousness happens according to order and there is another phenomenon which is called the phenomenon of effectiveness, 
Why the chitta is happening in this way to come to understand the object clearly? That is another phenomenon. Then there is a, a very famous phenomenon in the Buddhist literature, phenomenon of impermanence. Whatever happens, decays. This is a very famous doctrine in the Buddha's teachings. Buddha would say everything which arises passes away, everything is non-self and also conditioned things will cause, for, cause us suffering. So these are the main doctrines of the Buddhist teaching. Therefore, even though the force, these chintas in, get intensified in terms of force, clarity of cognition and their urge, when the, because of the nature of impermanence, when it comes to a certain level, it starts to decrease. That is another type of a phenomenon. We normally say everything get decays with the time and one day it will pass away. So the phenomenon of impermanence effects here. So therefore, when we take the Javana arises for seven times, we normally, the literature mentions, it comes to the uh, climax at the fourth Javana and then it starts to decrease. The, the power of Javana starts to decrease. Uh, starting from the fifth Javana, the scholars have mentioned the Javana is said to be fallen. So this is also explained in their literature, in, our, in the traditional literature, because now when we come, we know about the spiritual attainments, spiritual attainments like attaining Jhana, attaining the Magapala. So attaining of Jhana and attaining of Magapala happens with Javana Chittas. Before this attainment, there is a certain Chitta which facilitates this attainment. We call this Gotrabhu. Attainment is the fruition, like a fruition, like you come into that, you attain that level. Before that, there is chitta which facilitates this attainment. So this chitta which facilitates the attainment has to happen while the javana is growing, the period of growing. It means when it comes to the fallen part, fallen uh, level of the javana, this gotrabhu chitta cannot happen because a gotrabhu, when it is in the decreasing part of the javana process cannot support for the attainment. So normally that it, to that level they have discussed like in a, in a, I'm talking about the moment of attainment at the moment of attainment we normally they, they say the literature says that the, the supporting I'm not talking about the moment of attainment the one mind moment before the attainment which facilitates the attainment attainment is like a like a fruition you come into that level like it's, it's something which I've achieved. So the immediate previous chitta, which facilitates this attainment, has to happen while this process is in the increasing process, not it has come to the fifth. So normally we say Gotrabhu chitta has to be either the fourth javana or the third javana or third javana. It cannot happen at the second level because it's too weaker. Because the javana still grows up. When we talk about the whole mind process, we normally say javanas are powerful, but still it has to grow. So normally an object is understood when a, such a process completes. So that's the point. So this also shows Buddhism advocates about the non-self theory. What is the non-self theory understood through this? It means the chitta cannot come into a clear understanding suddenly. It has to happen gradually, one after another. It means it is not something which happens according to the person's will. It's not something happens according to the will of another extreme ultimate divine being. It is a natural process. Normally, if two molecules are uh, functioning, like making a, a reaction, there are certain steps that happen. In the same way, whatever cognition happens in the mental sphere of the beings, it happens step by step, one after another. One after another. So that is the non-self theory also uh, explained based on this uh, chitta process. It starts to increase and uh, and then the next point is each javana supports for the other javana for its increasing. In Abhidharma, we call this asevana pachya. Asevana pachya means the javana support the following javana. And then the thing is, this mind process, another similar mind process will be followed. I have more space to draw. In a, in like not this process, the similar mind process will keep on happening. So the power of these javanas also affect the following mind processes. It's not only this effect is not only found from one mind moment to another. It is found from process to process. So that is why we can develop a skill. Sometimes in the beginning we find the proficiency of a certain skill happens because this 
uh, support is given. The strength of the chitta increases at the same time the proficiency of the chitta is another point. Proficiency of the chitta increases when it keeps on happening on the same object. This is also called the Asevana Pachya. So that is why the, when someone keeps on focusing, meditating again and again, his Samadhi increases. His understanding increases. When he keeps on studying the same, same subject, his uh, ability increases. When he keeps on doing, practicing a certain skill, his mind easily starts to uh, perform this function. So this is the uh, support given by previous Javana to the latter Javanas. So this is called Asevana Pachya Sati. So these are the points that I want to emphasize in this Javana process. And finally, these Javanas, some of these Javana, normally we have 55 Javanas. Uh, Vidama students may know it, 55 Javanas. Among the 55 Javanas, except four, four Palachitas, 51 has an, another attribute called intentional attribute in the Sabya Parachitta. The four Chittas are resultant consciousness of the path consciousness, Magga Chittas has the ability to produce the Pala. Because of the power of the Magga, the Pala Chitta gets to the level of Javana. The remaining chittas have the intentional attribute. Intentional attribute means sabya para chitta we normally call. They, we do it, we normally, that this intentional attribute is what we normally say, we do karma intentionally. So normally if someone has done a bad deed in the sasana, Buddha normally rebukes, the blames this monk. Because he took the decision by himself and he made the, the, he made the action by his own will. But this doesn't contradict with the Atta. Self is a different thing. We'll discuss this later. What is the self of, and how it differs from the will? People have the will. The mind has a will. It can make the decision. How it doesn't contradict with the non-self theory explained by the Buddhist teaching. That is a different story. So we, in the Buddhist theory, they explain, they accept that there is a certain will. Will means we have, to, we can make the decisions. Decisions are taken. So this decision making is found in the Javana Chittas. These Chittas are the causes that we get the idea that I do the actions according to my will. And also these Javana Chittas experience the flavor of the object clearly. So we say that I experience the objects. And also these Javana Chittas knows the object clearly. So we say that we recognize the object clearly. So these kinds of self ideas happens because of the ability of this Javana Chitta. That is another point. So these, among the 55 Javanas, 51 Javanas has the intentional attributes. Four Javanas are produced by the, as a resultant of the Magga. Then the, finally, the, the, when uh, someone is performing a physical action, uh, with the help of the Javanas, normally say Javana Chittas produce certain kind of Rupa. Like for example, I'm going like this, Rupa. So not only one Rupa, they create lots of Rupa in the body, especially with more air element. With more air element. So when these Rupas come together, we make the physical movement. It is mentioned in the commentaries that the when someone is make, going to make a movement, there are rupas which are produced by the first six javanas, and these rupas which are produced by six javanas, because chitta arise and pass away, but the rupa exists more than the chitta. The lifespan of rupa is more. Even though this rupa was produced by this chitta, even this chitta passes away, this rupa may last for a longer time. 17 mind moments normally. So this rupa will also last. So when it comes to seven, six, seven chitta, all these rupas which were produced by the previous javana still exist. So they come together and they make a force. They get accumulated and make a certain force. When the rupa produced by the seventh javana, the force of this rupa is added to this force, the body makes the movements. So therefore, according to the commentaries, the movements happens when someone is making a certain slight movement in the body. The movement happens with the seventh javan. Then another process will work. So likewise, it keeps on moving. For example, if you are lifting the hand, this happens with many number of processes. So we are talking about a very slight movement made by the by, based on the my intentional movement. When it happens, even in this micro level of javanas, 
in the movement happens with the seventh javan. So these are the points I want to discuss with regard to the javana. And then, uh, yeah, quickly I'll uh, talk about the next topic, Sankhara Beda. Sankhara Beda means sometimes, now we discuss that Chitta is divided based on the type, wholesome, unwholesome, functional and resultant, and also based on the realm, the craving that get attached to these chittas and based on the functions we discuss about four functions patisandhi chuti bhavanga and javana functions and now there is another classification called sankhara veda sankhara veda means it's a very simple type of classification classified based on how we produce it what sort of efforts were put to bring a certain chitta it means Sometimes when we are supposed to do certain actions with certain chittas, our mind reluctant, we become reluctant to do it. At that time we normally say the chitta has retarded, retarded from performing the action. For example, if you take the monks, they are supposed to attend the elders normally every day and discuss with them, pay homage to them, especially when you are in a monastery, when we go to the senior, senior seados and discuss. So all the conditions are, are there, like the, uh, the, the seado is present in the monastery and we know that it is useful to go and come and pay respect and we know how much dhamma we get in, when we go there and we know it's a normal etiquette in the in the sasana, it is something Buddha has recommended. All these information are there but sometimes still our mind reluct gets reluctant to do it. So that time we say the mind has retarded. At that time, two types of extra additional efforts can be put. One is another one comes and threatens us. Go and do it. Do uh, go to the go, uh, go and perform this action. So someone comes and a friend comes and threatens us. Or if it is uh, regarding an unwholesome deed, a person who wants to go and hunt and uh, support his family, he they, he has the weapons. He, he, he knows how to go and hunt, but sometimes he may feel, he, he may feel tired or something. So his friend or the family members would ask him, please go and do it or someone may threaten him to do it. So likewise, sometimes we get threatened by others. So then we get the urge back and we go and do it. Sometimes our friends may use skillful means. Instead of threatening, they will say the benefits of doing this. What are the disadvantages if you don't do it? At the same time, we ourselves will start to make contemplations and understand if I don't do is this, these are the bad, bad defects that I will get, disadvantages. So we get encouraged by ourselves. So likewise, when the chitta retards from doing a certain action, and if it get re-encouraged, so in, our, in the literature it says these types of chittas are called sasankarika, it's called prompted, prompt chittas, prompted, prompt chittas, sasankarika. It means encouraged. Chittas which have been encouraged. Then if some chittas, sometimes we don't get, our mind doesn't retard likewise. When, they, when someone asks us to do something, we quickly do it. Or if you are supposed to do certain action, we, we do it without hesitation. In, su in such case, our mind is not encouraged. So such chittas we call asankharika. We call it Asankarika chittas. So all the chittas which were divided into 89 chittas can be divided into Asankarika and Sasankarika. Can be divided into the two groups Asankarika and Sasankarika. So the, if, if the extra efforts that we put or others put to, to encourage us are called Payoga and Upaya. Payoga and Upaya, I have given it in the handout because Payoga and Upaya, when we are encouraged by certain means, our mind get urged or interested in the activity and we perform the action. So all the chittas can be divided into these two ways. So if I just give a uh, brief uh, uh, explanation on this, normally the Loba Mula Chitta, Dosa Mula Chitta and Kusala Kiriya Chittas, Maha Kusala Maha Kiriya Chittas, the Sasankara Asankara Beda is decided in the same manner. And the two Mohamula Chittas are always Asankarika because the doubt and the restlessness Uddacha Sampayutta Chitta and uh, Vichikicha Sampayutta Chitta because Uddacha and Vichikicha are natural doubt and restlessness are natural within the beings so they get they happen naturally it's not always Asankarika 
then the ahetuka chittas are also asankarika because when the conditions gather they happen they are not uh, there is no much uh, retarding nature in them and then uh, when we come to the maha vipaka chittas uh, when they perform the patisandhi bhavanga chuti functions so they are asankarika sasankarika nature is decided based on how the near death sign was offered to them offered to their mind in the previous life. if it happened based on the kama itself we call the chitta the patisandhi chitta is asankarika if the sign was brought by different means of upaya we call it we call the patisandhi chitta as sasankarika then when it performs the tadalamana functions according to the javana we call the asankarika sasankarika nature of mahavipaka then when we come to the jhanas, when we come to the jhana, asankarika sasankarika nature is decided based on the patipada. We all, uh, someone who may have studied that patipada. If we make a difficult practice, if, we, if our practice is through difficulty, our attainment is considered as sasankarika. If we can attain this spiritual growth very easily, we call the attainment is asankarika. And also in the uh, uh, paragraph I have mentioned, there are two, three types of special jhanas. The jhanas that the Brahmas get by birth and also some Vipassana yogis who doesn't have jhana when they attain they get the Samatha jhanas automatically and also if Anagami who has not attained jhana dies before his death naturally or, uh, as a law of nature he will get jhana so these three jhanas we normally call Upapati Siddha jhana Marga Siddha jhana and Marga Siddha Gatika jhana so these three jhanas are also Asankarika then the Magapala Chittas are also decided the Asankarika Asankarika nature decide on how, how they how the practice happen so these are the points I gave a very brief explanation you can go through it so because next lecture I am going to start the fundamental concomitants yeah, you can have a question. Yes. Uh, I want to ask about the the VT of attainment. VT of attainment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, think car person. Yeah. Um, the the maga or the part the jana chitta be the four jana yeah. be the strongest. Yeah. But to the manda person, if uh, into the future, yes, uh, yes. At any time, the four already uh, degree. But the function of this chitta is still the strongest. Can spread the hindrance or to eradicate the kidney So about the about the law of the fault of each Japanese chitta. Yeah. So that's why I mentioned. I specifically mentioned the chitta before the attainment. I didn't mention about the attainment. Be chitta before the attainment has to happen within this process. I'm mean, talking about the gotrabhu chitta, not the jhana chitta. Gotra Bhuchitta. So Gotra Bhuchitta which facilitates has to happen either at the fourth level or the third level. So the jhana is like, we can call it is like an outcome of Gotra Bhut. So the, all the actions has been done. So it is true that the jhana chitta happens during the time it is falling. But actually the real uh, supportive, that's the most important thing is here is not the jhana chitta, it makes the real function, but the chitta which supports the jhana has to happen during the growth time. It's not the jhana, jhana it's like the uh, jhana chitta is like an attainment, it's like a fruition in that sense. So this attainment has to be supported by, supported by a chitta which is in the growing process. So normally we say when the jhana arises at this fourth level, fifth level, it is like it is in the falling position. For example, when we give up a certain thing from our hand, it will fall down. It will fall down. But at the same time, if we make a certain force on this, it may travel in the sky without falling down. So in the same way, even the jhana happens in the falling sphere, in the falling sphere, it still gets the support of the previous chittas. So normally we now we say the jhana samapati. Why it cannot sustain at this level in the as a first in the first attainment? Because we, we cannot sustain because it doesn't get the support of a previous jhana. So therefore, when we're talking about the attainments, the part that we have discussed about the chittas which facilitate the attainment, not we are not talking about the attainment. So that's why. Jhana chitta can happen in the fourth or fifth time, but the important chitta 
is the chitta which is previous to this attain. Not, not, not talking about the attain. So this chitta has to happen in a growing, growing part. Uh, while in the growing process. If I say it is in the growing process, the attainment should have happened in the here. But the Ritvija says it's not the case. The chitta which facilitates the attainment is the important part. It should be able to, it should be in the growing process. So always we talk about the causes. The cause, based on the cause, effect will be powerful. So it is true that the, because of the phenomenon of effectiveness, it will fall down. So if I say this fifth javana, it is reducing the force than this. It is not because of the uh, cause, it's because of a different phenomenon, different phenomenon of impermanence. But if you take about the causes, this fifth jhana, fifth chitta has the best cause because it is supported by the most powerful chitta. If the chitta happens here, it is supported by this chitta, right? So at the same time, this chitta is powerful. So we have to say if someone attains at the fourth, fourth, fourth jhana, if the attainment happens, that attainment is powerful. If that attainment is powerful. At the same time, if it is supported by a fourth jhana, jhana that attainment is also quite powerful. That attainment is also quite powerful. If the samapatti happens here, it is quite weaker because it is supported by a quite weak chitta. Yeah. On the process in Shana Chitta. Yes. So uh, this, also this support can happen because it's not the seven Chavana. Yes. The samapatti is the only process yeah. in Shana Chitta. Yeah, starting from here. Huh? Starting from here is Java. Jhana. These are Kama Vachara. Right? So, so when we call your Javana pro, Jhana Samapati, we cannot explain it only with these four chittas. It has to be explained by the Jhanas of previous Samapati. Previous Samapati. So, that's why in the explanation we mentioned, the support of Javana is not only given from one mind to another. It is also given from process to process. Process to process. So therefore, a person who has attained the jhana many times, when he goes into the samapatti, his chitta is more powerful than the first attainment. The why the first attainment cannot sustain for a long time? Because it doesn't get the support of a previous attainment of the similar jhana. So it has to stop with one chitta. But if it keeps, uh, if someone has developed the jhana for many times, attained the jhana, his mind is getting a very powerful force. So it's just this uh, example Lady Sando has given. If you just give up this uh, pen, it will just suddenly fall down. But if we make a force and just give up, uh, release it from our hand, it will travel in the sky without falling down. So the force given by the other jhanas, the previous jhanas is like that. So even though the jhana chitta comes into the falling part of the process, still it may sustain. Sustain means keeps on happening without going into the Bhavanga stream. That is because of the force of the previous mind processes of jhana. Right? Previous mind processes of jhana. Yes. Yeah. Then uh, it means like always there is a limit of the force given by the previous chittas. So there will be a natural decrease happening. Even though it's like, there, even though this force is given, this is normally decreases. And at the end, automatically, the minds retrace to the Bhavanga Chitta. Retrace to the Bhavanga Chitta. So, at the level of Jhana, Jhana is like a, like a result, it's like a fruition. So, it is, it's, it's sustaining happens because of the previous uh, forces. So, within the Jhana, when we are in a Jhana Samapati, we cannot increase or decrease in the Samapati itself. So it has to happen, the skill has to be developed previously. So more we develop, more we restrain, more we uh, have a good conduct in our life, more effective the jhana samapatti will be. So therefore, all the practice is the important thing. When we are talking about the samapatti or an attainment in the spiritual sphere, so my personal idea is it's supported by the previous force practice. It's not, samapatti is not the point that we normally focus.
That's how I understand. If I get another answer, I'll, I'll explain you next week. Right? That's how I feel to answer at this moment. Yes. Yes, Payoga and Upaya. If you go to the, <clears throat> I think their numbers are same with mine. Huh? Four point three five, four point three pi, three five. So it's get three thirty five point one two, right? Thirty five point one one and one two. So Payoga means efforts done by others. The thing is threatening, like they threatens you. If you don't do this, I will do this. Do this side likewise. This Payoga is threatening. Upaya is. Whatever effort we make other than threatening, like we make a rule, rule is not a threatening. Threatening means you directly threaten. If you don't do it, uh, the king may say, I will punish you, I will kill you, so likewise. So this is called threatening. Upaya means using skillful means, making a rule, new rule, or uh, telling the benefits of doing it, telling the disadvantages of not doing it. So these things are called upaya. And also if we get encouraged by ourselves, this is also called upaya. That's the difference. Only difference is upaya is payoga is threatening all the other means are upaya. But the right people follow the rule also because of, of the fear. Uh, yeah, secondary we can say, but it's just this is just a technical uh, way of saying. You can it's it's not a serious thing like uh, payoga is like uh, it's like an effortful thing. So they will call it uh, the literature has mentioned there's just effort. So if, if someone wants, they can put uh, uh, rules also into payoga. But uh, payoga is a one kind of a directly forcing. That's what it's meant here. Yeah, regarding the, the question was the, about the Javana in the fourth, uh, arising at the fifth level and the fourth level. That is how I understand it. I'm not uh, uh, guaranteeing that answer. So if I find a different answer, I'll, I'll explain you later. Right? That's a good question. So I'll, we'll just start the lecture in another 15 minutes.